Okay, I'm about to give you a crash course in why I say about what the SPCA does and how they get away with railroading people. Our system is so pathetic that if you are arrested for a criminal act, they have the right to put you in jail, breach of orders, and etc. Again, put you in jail because you're breaching the law, which is the criminal acts. However, the SPCA acts are not criminal, and yet they can lie, have you arrested, held in jail, put up in front of a judge, lie, and get away with it. If we did that, we'd be arrested and put in jail. But no, it's New Zealand. Now, if you want to get it moved from one court to another, such as down the line to up to somewhere else because you've moved or things have changed, etc., the only way that they will move it from one court to another when it's the SPCA stuff is if you plead guilty to it. So again, how is that fair? You don't even get to defend yourself and if you need to move it up to somewhere else. Because to get it moved, you have to plead guilty. Then we come to the next sections of where you want to defend yourself, none of the lawyers want to get involved. You try to get a lawyer involved, they run you in circles and then they don't do a very good job or they don't present your evidence or they don't call your witnesses or they just basically palm you off and try and make out you're crazy. Again, how is that justice? People again think I'm joking until they actually end up in the same situation I've ended up in and then they realize like, oh shit, she wasn't joking, she was telling the truth. I have not lied about anything you have seen in my videos. I have not conned, missed stuff out, or exaggerated. Everything that has gone on is the truth. The New Zealand SPCA are a joke. They are not the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. They're the Society of, let's rip you off and fuck you over. I stated in a couple of other videos I've done earlier about to do with the SPCA including down to the fact where they will come through to areas that are low incomes, stick out brochures saying about, oh, here, get your pet sex de uh, for free. And then they take note of everybody who brings in their pet to be de for later reference, so then they go back and they steal it. And then they charge you $65 for the night for looking after it because they gave it worm tablets and they fed it and they housed it. When there was nothing wrong with it, they just took it. And if you didn't pay their $65 and you don't do what they ask or what they request of you, which is beyond reasonable care and everything else, they then dream up shit along the lines of either, oh, you didn't pay for this or you didn't do this and you didn't do that. But use again the terms of failure to look after something in their opinion, which you cannot get a second opinion against because they're the SPCA. They can say what they like, do what they like. So if you don't do what they want, they then press charges against you. And they'll dream up whatever excuse they can use under the Act to do it. Now, there's sections of the Act that actually clearly state that if they are overstepping their mark like this, then you can actually get them pulled into court because they're duly authorised officers of the Crown. But the problem comes when you try to get them to do that. I took them to district courts. I took them to the high courts. They kept claiming that they're just a charity. Doesn't matter if they're just a charity. As long as they carry warrant cards that clearly state they are duly authorised officers of the Crown, the Crown is supposed to take responsibility for them. The Crown is supposed to be there so that basically, again, if they're duly authorised officers, that um, if they rip you off, they fuck you over, or they break the law, they're supposed to be there to hold them accountable. They're supposed to be held accountable for their own actions. But as you've seen with the way the Crown treats me, it doesn't take responsibility for nothing it does. And especially when you've got different parties in control. For instance, when Labour are in, they fucked me around for five years, but eventually, after banging my head against the wall and trying to get things straightened out, they obeyed the laws. National have been in now for over six years, although technically it's um, just coming up to six years now, but it's a little bit longer the way they behave. They're in a third term, which I can't figure out how the fuck they got a third term. Neither can a few other people. And so as things, have, as you've seen over the last few years, have been degrading downwards, um, what makes anybody think that if I go and do things the correct way, which I have done for the last six years, and done for the last 10 years, and done for the last 15 years, what makes them think that it's going to change now? What was that term that somebody used about what is the ultimate form of stupidity? Doing the same things over and over again and hoping for a different result. 
Well, New Zealand is nothing but a stupidity result. It doesn't change. It doesn't fix anything. It gives you token lies and bullshit. And then it has laws like those for the Animal Welfare Act where they can do what they like. Now, again, we are railroaded into stuff. We get things cheated from us and ripped off. But because New Zealanders don't stand up and do jack shit until they suddenly realise it's too late or somebody kills somebody, um, again, it's fuck you over, fuck you over, fuck you over. So you've just got a crash course in New Zealand and the SPCA and the way our system works, or rather doesn't work. So anybody dumb enough to want to come to this country, um, I have no pity for you whatsoever when you find out just how shitty it is. In fact, I have no pity for anybody because of the way I've been treated.